Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God who loves you with the true agape love. He wants to fill your heart and your mind with that love. He wants to pour it into you and he does by his spirit. He will keep your heart and mind in perfect peace. He will comfort you on every side. He will strengthen you with strength in the inner man so that you're able to do all things that, all those good things that need to be done. You can do all things through Christ who's just strength of your life. Hmm? He who has begun a good work and you will complete it on to the day of Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry about anything. Just cast your care before the Lord and let him work in you. Let him lead you and guide you and direct your steps. Let him bring you into that place of, of rest, of peace, of wholeness, of completeness. Hmm? You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Let me say it again. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. And all you have to do is lean on him. Lean on him. Roll on him. Roll all your cares on him. Give him your heart. Give him your mind, will, and emotions. Give him your strength. That's a part of us. See, this is uh, this is the part of us, the soul and the the strength that we have. We we lean on Him. We lean on the Word. We get to know Him, and we say what we hear Him saying. We we do what we see Him doing. He'll show you things because you get close and personal with Him. You trust Him. You trust Him. Oh, yeah, so I was going to read real quick. Um, trust is one of the. Old Testament words for faith. I'm reading this from my notes in the King James Bible. Uh, according, I mean, it's uh, something to do with Psalm 2. <laughs> it says in the verse 12, Kiss the son lest anyone kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So to put your trust in God is to have faith toward God. And to have faith is to take refuge in him. It's to lean on him. It's to roll on him. It's to stay upon him. It's a relationship that we've entered into. And this relationship, God wants to sanctify you. And he sanctifies you with his name in your heart, in between those two ears of yours. The, the word is put in your heart and written on your mind. He wants to keep you. Uh, the Lord is jealous for you. He doesn't want the, the devil to have you. He doesn't want the things of this world to have you. He doesn't even want your flesh to have control over you. He wants to teach you how to take power over your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. How to keep it in the right place. And that's to learn how to walk in the Spirit. When we learn how to walk in the Spirit, we don't give in to foolish things. We don't keep on sinning the way we used to sin. You know, when we're in this world, we are, we have... That nature is bound to come up in your mind somewhere. It's, it's somewhere in your thoughts that nature is bound to come up. That temptation is bound to tempt you. And you're going to feel it in your members. But <laughs> you don't have to obey it. That's what Jesus did when he went to that cross. He took sin and he nailed it to the cross. Not He, he nailed it spiritually. And he nailed it physically. That we no longer have to obey the lust of this flesh of ours. Jesus did a job. He's the author and finisher of this faith that we have. We can do all things through Christ who is the strength of our life. This is a personal relationship with the living God. With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's able to work everything out in your life. <laughs> for your good. Even though... 
even though bad things have happened to you and bad things happen you know life and death are in this world we don't know when the only time we get a due date is when we're pregnant but that's not always certain is it we don't always know the day we're going to die not everybody for the majority of us we don't get oh you got two weeks we don't get that and that's that's not long enough but anyway we should expect these things and yet we're so grieved about it because we don't believe what the Lord has given us we have to go beyond this cross I'm telling you we have to go beyond the cross we 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 must get over these things that the devil can threaten us with we must get over the things that this fear that we have I'm talking about it because it just came back up to my remembrance I I also looked at a movie and I saw this woman who had a diagnosis and she was going on and she had explained it to her kids so that they wouldn't go out fearful and that they would trust God and believe God has a plan and, and anyway she wanted to she took it so gracefully because God gave her the grace see his name was in her heart her name his name was on her mind she understood that she was stepping out of one place and going into another place she there's no death in Christ in the spirit there's no death we have life everlasting this is the promise of God oh how I wish we would read our Bibles I know don't be offended over the word wish okay but I, I do so desire that we would read the word and take little bits and, and pieces of it John 3 16 talked about God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish go into judgment go into that lake of fire but have everlasting life see this life the, the life that he's talking about is life in the presence of the Father, in the presence of the Son, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. But that eternal life started, that everlasting life started the day we said yes to Christ. But we need to learn how to live like it right now and not fear the things that are happening in the world today or tomorrow. Whatever they come up with, it is... <laughs> The end will come when God, the Father, says it will. He knows the day. He knows the hour. But he doesn't reveal that to anybody. Yeah? All we can say is that it's very soon. We're not in the last hours anymore. The last hours were when, when Christ was crucified and, and when Christ rose from that grave. That's when the clock started. We're in the last seconds. And we can see it. We can see it all by the evil that is in this world and by how many people are falling away. We can see it by how time has sped up. The Father said he would speed it up for the saints, for the sake of the saints, those who have said yes to Jesus. Lest they be succumbed by the enemy by the flesh and by this world read uh, James chapter 1 you read James chapter 1 you understand the temptation and the things that we're suffering the things that we're, we're going through and you'll be stronger for it remember we can always ask the Lord for wisdom in our temptation and when we know him we can understand the temptations the things that come knocking at the door of our mind and we'll walk in the spirit We'll walk after the things that are that are good. We'll keep our mind on things above. Keep our mind stayed on Christ. I, I named this "I will sanctify" because I wanted to write out. He will. I will sanctify my name in you. I was reading from Ezekiel chapter thirty-six and Romans chapter eight. You know, it's a, it's a, I'm not going to read this whole thing. <laughs> 
but Ezekiel 36 was talking about the 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 Lord was saying that he's going to heal the land he's going to so many bad things were done in the land that the, I mean it was completely defiled it was terrible the murder and the idolatry and the whoredoms that were done in the land so you think to yourself about the world that we're living in right now and everything that's going on around us how much murder how much adultery how much sex trafficking uh, how much arguing and bitterness and hatred and uh, how much evil is going on in the world hmm how much abortions have been done in this world how many detestable things have been done in this land well the Lord tells he, he's talking to the land he's talking he's saying to the land that this won't happen to you again my sons my daughters I'm going to send I'm not not talking to sons and daughters but I'm going to send uh, into you the land my my daughters my my sons my beast and, and animals I'm going to send you good things so that you'll be fruitful and you begin to multiply he's talking to the land that should give us a little hint about what we we can speak to we can speak to the land around us you can speak life to it in any way the Lord comes down to Ezekiel comes down to um, verse 36 And he says in verse, chapter 36, verse 20, When they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my, my holy name. When they said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they have gone out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, wherever they went oh I'm getting to a point here listen since the time of Christianity I mean not since the time but for a while now I've watched since like the year 2000 and before 1997 I don't know what day it was that I heard of all these preachers and teachers doing things I mean, it was publicly, publicly announced some of the despicable things, horrible things that Christians have done. And I want to say Christians. I want to use that word. They profane. We have profaned the name of the Lord by living the way that the world lives in our minds. We haven't been sanctified in our minds see the Lord knows how to sanctify a mind we don't talk about that much do we we don't talk much about the mind getting sanctified but the Lord tells us to love him with all of our heart spirit soul and body with all of our heart with all of our soul and with all of our strength some verses even say with all of our mind with all the way that you think, with all your will, with all your emotions, love the Lord your God. If, if we can do that, if we can come and bring ourselves to this word, he's going to sanctify us from the inside out. I think I'm going to stick on Romans chapter 8, 7 and 8, starting in verse 24 of Romans chapter 7. I'll put it in, in the description below because we need to get cleansed from our the inside out. It's what's inside of a person that defiles them. It's what's in your mind, your mind, your, your mind, will, and emotions being in control that you see things out here and there out here in the world and we want to do what everybody else is doing or we're tempted in the flesh to go after little kids. Hmm? We're tempted in the flesh to hurt somebody. We're tempted in the flesh to be greedy. We're tempted in this flesh for sexual immorality greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world if we would 
heed him, if we would come and sit down with him. In that time of temptation, the Lord is able to give you the wisdom to defeat your enemy. He's able to give you the strength to defeat your enemy. See, because where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. But we are but we need to understand Hebrews chapter, what is that? Hebrews chapter 4, where we <laughs> where the word discerns our heart. The the word discerns your mind, will, and emotions. He knows the thoughts and the intentions that you have. The Lord wants our souls to prosper in the knowledge of who He is. It's called getting a renewed mind. Not to be transformed by this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. He wants to put His Word in our heart and write it on our mind. See, this is the Lord our God who will keep us in perfect peace because, see, we stayed on Him. We, we don't trust this. We don't trust ourselves. We want to take this thing that has defiled the nations around us. It has not just defiled our ourselves, but it's defiling the people around us. And we want to take this mind, will, and emotions and bring it to this Word and let it be transformed by who He is. It's not just, this is not a religion. This is a relationship. And in this relationship, I, I, I refuse to have adultery with before God. I don't want it. I don't want it. I have a hard time watching movies where somebody's kissing. I put my hand in front of my eyes. I don't want their stuff. And that might not bother somebody else. I don't understand. I don't know. But there's things that I, I just can't allow in my eyes because it's going to bring me into a place where, where where that might be a hindrance for me that might be a place where I'll, I'll fall well, I don't want to walk into sin and it, whatever you feed the soul of yours it'll keep going on inside of your mind and it'll occupy you until it occupies your flesh and becomes an action once the thought well, you can have the thought but when we acknowledge Him in all of our ways, we're able to cast thoughts out. Huh? I'm remembering. Um, which one is it that where we we uh, take thoughts and make them obedient to Christ? First Corinthians or Second Corinthians? Second Corinthians, chapter ten. We take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. <laughs> it's because we're in love with Him. And we hear the Holy Spirit calling us. Romans chapter 8 again. We hear the Holy Spirit counseling us. We hear the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. Because the Holy Spirit is, is, is pressing against the flesh and the flesh is pressing against the Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit is teaching our spirit how to take possession of our soul. So that we can walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He wants to bring down that pride. Where we can do it all ourselves. Where we think we know how to do everything. And we take in too much of this place all around us. And then we get defiled in our eyes. But see, we live in this world right now. This body is in this world. This mind is in this world. And yet it has a, a way of stepping into the spirit. And obeying whatever spirit it's listening to. <laughs> we are spiritual beings in a physical body. And yet the Father of heaven and earth knows how to train your soul to obey your spirit. We're in training. Right here, right now. See, I want to bring I want to bring my best gift before the Lord. The gift that He gave me, I want it to multiply in this earth, and I can't do it if I'm obeying the lust of my flesh. I want something good to give and give to him when I have to make an account of 
What did you do here? <laughs> not that he doesn't know. He knows. I'm just not going to lie. Another thing we need to get out of us. Lying. Everything starts in the spirit. We live in a very spiritual world. Spiritualness. Spirits, spirits are all around us. Speaking into the minds and will and emotions of people. But we have the Spirit of God who teaches us all things. I have to go. He's teaching our spirit. He's strengthening our spirit. Strengthening us in the inner man. He's, he's, that's Ephesians. Chapter 3. Ezekiel 36 again. Verse 22. And I will sanctify my great name, which was ha, has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in the, their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am <laughs> holy, when I've been hallowed in your in, in you before their eyes. Listen to this again. The nations shall know that I am the Lord says the Lord God when I am hallowed in you before their eyes for I will take you from among the nations gather you out of the countries and bring you into your own land now we're talking about the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is within us because we said yes to Jesus Christ if you have not said yes to Jesus Christ say yes now I want you to be Lord of my life forgive me of my sins I repent I change my mind I don't want to go in that direction I want you to be Lord of my life father forgive me of my sins and, and I, here I am the simplest prayer that I ever made when I was eight years old was I want him and that's all, all I needed to say. And he came into my heart. I want him. <laughs> and then get your get get the word in your face, okay? But the Lord, he wants to ho make his name holy in you. This is a relationship. He's speaking to your heart. To be purified, to be holy. Verse 25 says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. All that stuff you leaned on for, and you trust on. Everything that you rolled all your situations on, all your cares before. Everything that strengthened you. You won't lean on it anymore. You'll lean on the one who created the world and all that there is in it. Verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I'll give you a heart like mine. I'll give you my spirit. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways, in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. And you can read the rest of, for, of it for yourself. But God wants to heal you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to make you that child of God that you are. Again, we're spiritual beings in a physical body. And if you're wondering why I took Ezekiel, read it for yourself. Ezekiel 36. Because history always repeats itself. It's saying the same thing over and over and over again. And though he did this way back then for them, this is something that's being done right now, every day, all the time. You're holy. You're set apart for God. You're his house, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. We've got to get our eyes out of this world and get our eyes on Christ. It says over here in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared 
with the glory which shall be revealed to us. For the earnest expectation of the cre creature, the creation, waits for the manifestation of you and I. The world, this, this land that you're walking on, that apartment that you're in, the ground that it's on, the job that you have, the ground that is on, the air that you breathe, the trees that are around you, the wind that is around you. Oh, I said air. Well, anyway, <laughs> the water that's around you, wherever you are, the creation is waiting for the children of God. is waiting for the sons of God, the children of God. The Lord wants to manifest his name in you. But we have to be willing to set aside the internet for a while and open a paperback Bible and just get the word in our face. I said that on purpose. There's too many dings, bells, and whistles. There's too many distractions when you open up your computer, when you open up your laptop, when you open up your iPhone, your, your watch phone, you, whatever thing you have, your tablet, whatever it is you have that hooks to that internet, there's too much for your mind. You need to get into that quiet place, that secret place, and get into this word and let the relationship of God stand out he wants to have a relationship with you where he sanctifies himself in your in your eyes. Gives you his strength and his way of being, his way of living. Cleave to him because he loves you. Cleave to him because see, we're supposed to bring something here into this earth. That's why we're still here today. We're still here today because he's bringing something into this earth into through your life, through who you are. Through who you are in him. Let the Lord be sanctified in your heart today. Let him sanctify himself in you. Let him show you his great name. His name is salvation. Don't throw it away. Hold your salvation tight. Work out your soul salvation with awe. In the awe of the everlasting, almighty, wonderful counselor, all-knowing God. Let me come back to this and I'll be done. For the earnest expectation of creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the cre creation was made was made subject for the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly. He was made to have to deal with our mess. The the world, the physical world. The trees, the grass, the the sand, the dirt, <laughs> the animals, even the animals around us, they weren't willing to do the things, to, uh, to have to see the things that we've done. For the creation was made subject not, to, was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected it The same in, in hope. I know the King James really messes you up. But because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of the corruption of the glorious liberty uh, 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 into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The whole world's being released into your hand. And I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about the goodness of the land. The Lord's going to show up and He's going to show out. In your life. Why? Because he's saving nations. He's saving nations through your life. So let him let him show you how to live, how to eat, how to drink in the spirit. So that you won't succumb to your mind, will, and emotions, how you feel today. Let him lead you in what to eat. He's put good things before you in the presence of the enemy so that you could overcome the flesh, the devil, and the world. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face, International. Get the word in your face and eat him up, drink him up, because the Lord is our life. Bye-bye.